God bless you today. We are so happy that we are able to once again come to you and do some teaching and have our little talk. I have titled our infomercials talks. They're not sermons, but they're talks. And I think it's important that we do talk. There's a, a lot that's still going on with the virus and with the shutdown of churches, um, theaters, um, other public venues, sports arenas. <clears throat> but as it relates to the church, I'm still picking a bone with that whole notion that we should be shut down as long as we are as non-essential. That's my complaint non-essential. I do not second guess those are, that are making decisions, but I'm voicing an opinion that the church is more important than Home Depot, Lowe's, nothing against none of them. It's more important than fast food restaurants, Walmart. You said, well, Pastor, you, got, you have to have Walmart and box stores and stores open for food and supplies. That's true. So I'm not diminishing that. But the house of God should also be open to those that want to be in the number, proclaiming the gospel to one another, to equipping the saints. We are in new territory. We should be able... <clears throat> to continue to equip the saints. That doesn't mean um, a full house or nearly full house, but it does mean that each uh, organization needs to be able to uh, verify its number. If we are six feet apart uh, in the audience, wearing a mask, other precautions, it just shouldn't be a problem. It really shouldn't be a problem. Sitting there saying amen through a mask or not saying anything. <laughs> uh, it just it just strikes me, you know. Now, um, I'm not going to spend much time again on viruses, but I do need to address some things. I've made the statement, and I will continue to make it. This corona virus that's currently out, it is in the family of coronaviruses. So you have, you have to look at it like this. In many respects, it's just like the flu. And in many respects, it's not. Now, it's not an influenza vir virus. It's not that. When I say it's like the flu, I'm not saying that it's in the family of influenza. And we call it influenza for sure. We just said flu. Coronavirus. It's a family of viruses. There are multiple coronaviruses. Okay? The the condition that develops from this particular strain of virus, coronavirus, is called COVID-19. It that's a shortening of coronavirus, COVID, COVID. 19. It, it's a short name to say it's the 19 is 2019 when it originated. Um, that came about larger in part, in, in part because of China. China did not like the fact that the world was saying that it emanated in China. <laughs> Wuhan, China. And it did. And so they didn't want it called, have any association. It was similar to when the Mexican swine flu came out. 
people like, you know, the hair caught on fire and they almost lost their mind because she was saying Mexican swine flu. Well, or Mexico, it was out of Mexico, it was the Mexican swine flu out of their whole uh, uh, factories. And the conditions it developed and it jumped species and, and men and women, the human, uh, began to contract it. So we'll deal with China later at another time. I, I mean, I personally, uh, it's going to be taken care of. They've caused so much financial and misery in um, death, sickness, suffering. Now. Please hear me good. It's time to come back, serve the Lord with gladness. And, and I'd say I'm not arguing with anybody about, you know, the church is more than inside the wall. Why would you make that argument to me? I mean, why, why do we as Christians even bring that up to one another? We, we know this. So, I mean, it's like, it's like when we say that, it's like we're saying, dummy or stupid or whatever. I mean, don't you know that the church is more than inside the walls? Okay. It, it, it's more than that. But it is within the walls that you equipped. The Bible said the five ministries within, let me say the walls, because you never learn this out in the street. You never learn this out so it, it, it's, it, 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 it is supposed to be taken care of inside the wall. It's for the maturing, or the Bible uses the word perfecting, of the saints. And he has, he said, I first, I sent an apostle. An apostle is the one that sets it up, who's the forerunner, who's the trailblazer, who uh, starts a work. Um, they have been sent by God to start it. There are many pastors that have been called to churches that are already established in ministries, but when a, a new work or a work that is just being started and implemented, it takes an apostle to do that. You, you, you just do not start a church because you take a handbook and you look at, okay, first you do this, first you do this, first you do that. You must have a calling to do that. Uh, if you are, if you are setting it up in the name of Jesus Christ, He has protocols. So first the apostle, then the prophet. You have to some have someone proclaiming, speaking what God is saying at the moment. Uh, the the prophet is not so much telling something that's going to happen in the future. It is mainly. Uh, pointing to a thing and say, that's God, uh, this is of God. So the prophet is very um, instrumental in not so much predicting, but recognizing the move of God, declaring it's the move of God, so that you can move forward with that. Now, apostle, prophet. Then you have the evangelist. The evangelist is one primary within the body. Now, we're not talking about the going outside the walls to win souls, and that's a part of it. Soul winning, 99% it, uh, of it is outside the church, okay? Now, there will be those that come to church that are seeking Christ and receive Christ, but the lost world, the, the people that are lost, they're outside. But the evangelist, ha the evangelist has a role within the church. And what the evangelist does is they excite. They are to excite. Keep the, the body of Christ um, in an expectating, expectation that God is you know, going to move on their behalf. And so the evangelist excites and, and speaks things. And, and, and in such a way that it, it excites the body of Christ. So you have to have the evangelist. Um, then you have the pastor. The pastor is a different type of um, a segment of ministry than like none other. Because the pastor, first of all, has to care. And he cares for the flock. 
He cares for the fold. There are many flocks and there are many folds. But Jesus said the day coming that there'll be one fold. He doesn't have, the day won't come where he have many flocks. You'll have many folds. The flock is a combination of sheep, goats. Sheep on the right, goats on the left, and everything in between. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the flock. That, that for, the, for the lack of a better word, comes together, that flocks together, that gathers, that because everybody that flocks is not in the body, and they're not uh, saved, if we can use that. They have not received salvation. But the fold are those that have flocked, and now they begin to be fitly joined together. The Bible says that the body of Christ, we are members in particular, each person is a particular member in the body. And he said, he said that we fit jointly. We, we're tight. It, and that takes time. That takes teaching. And so he said, forsake not the assembling. For, forsake not the, the putting together. That fitting, you know, jointly. You know where that can't a uh, third and fourth voice be introduced into the fold. There are people that are folding together, and then there are people that are flocking. And within that entire congregation or assembly, there is a fold. There are some that are getting it. They are they are they they're not at odds with each other, not at strife. They're folding. It is the fold that lays down at night in the natural, the sheep that lay down at night and sleep. And so he is our shepherd, and we shall not want, and he maketh us lie down. <laughs> so, you know, that it's compelled. Even the joy of the Lord is compelled happiness. You can read it in Ezra 5 and 6 where he said, God strengthened his people's hand because of their enemy. When he strengthened the Bible said their hand, it gave them joy. In other words, it was for joy. Oh, man. The joy of the Lord is when God strengthens you and compel you in the midst of sorrow, in the midst of situations, to be happy. It's compelled happiness. So if anybody asks you what the joy of the Lord, send them to Ezra 5, the 5th chapter, and the 6th chapter, and read. And another thing that Ezra taught us, he said that the enemy came to help the people of God build the wall. That was the Jerusalem wall had been destroyed. You gotta remember, Nebuchadnezzar, when they come down, they destroyed it was Babylon, they destroyed the temple, they destroyed the wall, they destroyed the city. Uh, but it was under Ezra that it was uh, at Nehemiah. They began to rebuild and they started with the wall. You have to protect your boundaries, your borders. Because you have to defend the city. And you can't defend it uh -huh, if you have breaches and breaks in the wall. So Ezra said that the enemy came and they, they were just, they was adamant. They said, we want to help you. And Ezra said, no, you cannot help. Let me tell you all right now. Do not let your enemies help you build your, let me say it like this. Do, do not let them work side by side with you in building your work, your ministry. I said it's your enemies. Do not let them. That's what, that's what Ezra said, no. And then the enemy then showed their true colors. Huh. And then they wrote letters and hired counselors, lawyers, let me know, well, I'm on to something here because you need to hear what I'm saying. I have, I have kept so much back from the ears of congregants. I've kept it back from um, even officials in the church. Things that I don't have to tell, I don't tell. Because there are some people that are not only enemies to you and your ministry, 
and in particular, I'm talking about Tower of Power right now, you have enemies. You have enemies from within, but there are, there are those that from without, they're your enemy. Do not let them help you build. You can let them help you cut grass. You can let them help you paint. You can let them, man, I mean, you can let them, you can let them uh, give, you know. Because the Bible says when a, when a, a, a person or a man, which means man, man or woman, weighs when they please the Lord, he said even your enemies will be at peace with you. And so your enemies are want to help you because they have to be at peace with you. God has a law. He has a covenant with you. If your ways are pleasing to the Lord, your enemies will have to be at peace with you. So, in other words, do not let them help you build. And they hired lawyers and counselors and tried to stop the work. And that's, that's the thing I need to let you know. There are people right now. It wouldn't take much for them to take you to court. I'm talking about our ministry. Yeah, take you to court and try to prove that they are the ones that have the legal right to operate the ministry. They are not the apostle of that ministry, but through deception and through forgery, there's a lot of things. See, what I'm telling you now, this is why one of the reasons I was wanting to keep some of my recordings within our church. And, well, not so much in our church, but I didn't want to release them on YouTube. But there are some people sitting in the wings that think they have an ace up their sleeve legally to snatch the ministry. But what's sad is they don't realize you're touching. They are touching. Touch not. God's anointed. That thing that he anointed, that, that ministry that he anointed, that, 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 that organization that he anointed, touch it not. And they don't get it. And so I, I pray for people every day, those that I know, they think they have an ace up their sleeve. But I am, I am convinced that I do not worry about that because of some things that I had. And I'm, I'm going to say it like this. Uh, Sister Jackie Pree, who is an auditor for the, the, in the state of Texas for the school districts, and um, she has skills two or three degrees, accounting, business, master degrees, and for, she, she can do forensic audits. And back in some time past, there were some things that happened. And so, like I said, when some people think they have this ace up their sleeve, forensic accounting and those things that can go back and pull up records that many thought were destroyed. It's it's just only thing I can say. I just I hope and pray that no one plays that card. Now I told you we're talking. The reason I'm doing that is because we need to talk. We in we in we we in the most serious time that we've ever been in in our lives. There are people in government and in leadership of the world. They're in new territory. They they are they actually are guessing what an educated guess. Um, now, on the virus, they have had a model and several models that they have gone by, and they they feed information into those models, which give them an output. Um, or a projected uh, plan of attack for what's going on with the illnesses, death, and sickness, or whatever, uh, through the infectious diseases. And uh, every week that when they come out to talk about what they implemented 
and how it's working every week. <laughs> the models missed the whole point. They didn't work. They were error. And again, I'm not critique, crit critiquing, and I'm not using 2020 hindsight, vision. I'm just, I'm giving you a fact. So when the people tell you, you know, you got to listen to these scientists, you got to listen to these people. Every time they've come out and they were following the model, they said all of these millions of people would have died. That's possible. So I'm not, I'm not denying that. But then when they come out, then they, they have to revise that. Then it's a million point something, and then it's 700,000 uh, uh, deaths, talking about deaths. Uh, then it's 250, I mean, all the way down to, now they're saying 60. And even now they're saying possibly, because each time they go back and put numbers in because they see what's happening, less than 60,000. Uh, will be killed, will die from the virus. Now I'm just going to give you some, some numbers and I pray that when you watch this video you can pause it, make notes and um, you can ask questions. If, if I say something and you have a question about it, feel free to challenge some information or whatever, you know. Like I said, it's fluid. This whole thing is fluid. This has never been on this level with this new, and let me say it this way, with this new strand. The worst pandemic, and I really want to say epidemic, because the Spanish flu back in 1918, it wasn't everywhere like it is now to the degree. They were saying some things like, I think it was Australia did not at first have any cases of that Spanish flu. And again, everybody said Spanish flu. It's not racist to say where a thing or originated from. The worst recorded pandemic epidemic that has ever existed or known to man that's recorded. And let me show you what I'm talking about. There's a tremendous book by individual that I recommend, Dr. John Barry. He's a professor of tropical medicine and public health out of uh, Tulane. University of New Orleans, and uh, he he's the he's the authority on the Spanish flu, 1918. So just a hundred years ago, and that Spanish flu, it lasted three years, and it was right there at the end of World World War One, and so there was a whole lot of deaths, you know, during World War One. But this flu, there were 500 million people. Just that, that flu, the Spanish flu. Now you're talking about a powerful bacterial viral um, sickness that, that, that hit the world. 500 million, a half a Watch this now. And they did not shut down the world like the world shut down with this. But they did shut down some similar thing. The first thing, again, it was churches, theaters, social type things. Uh, but the difference between that Spanish flu and this, it doesn't warrant what we've done. Now, again, that's not a criticism. That's a fact. And I think what you're going to see a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, when this is dissected and we go back, there will be many things that we 
probably didn't have to, uh, you know, didn't have to have, to, we didn't have to do it. And again, but you had to do it because you never seen this before. So we're not criticizing anybody. We we did just did what we had to do. You know, we had to stay in place, shelter in place, uh, six feet, social distancing, keep your distance. You know, make sure you cover up when you cough. Now I got a problem with coughing in the elbow, coughing in the pit of your arm. Okay, I'm coughing in the pit of my arm. Okay, now it it may be kind of keeping you, but I'm, I'm contaminating my arm. But now, okay, my point is you try to do polite things sometimes, and maybe it's just for psychological, because even when you cough into your arm, the particles and particulates are still spreading, but not just uh, to the same amount uh, degree. It's just like putting on the facial masks, they're not protecting you from getting the virus. And it's not protecting you from giving it to someone, okay? It's almost a courtesy thing. Now there's an N, I think it's called N19, uh, N95 mask that the professionals use. Now that one, it's more so um, a higher percentage that can keep you from getting this virus. But you have to use that in conjunction with a shield, face shield, cover your eyes, goggles or something, and other protected things so that things, the, the, the droplets cannot get on your skin, your neck, uh, face. And so... I just want us to be educated because when we don't know, and excuse me, 